Hi everyone, welcome back to Hope and Coffee. I'm Hope, and with me is my tiki mug of coffee. Today we are actually doing a kind of a book review of The House of Salt and Sorrow. Now, I kind of introduced this one a little bit, probably a couple episodes ago, but wanted to go ahead and give a synopsis because the sequel, The House of Root and Ruin, is coming out on July 25th, and the podcast, Books Are Magical, which is a podcast that I also have with my friends Annalisha and Hannah, will be dropping the episode of the sequel on that particular day. So I wanted to go ahead and try to get the episode for this one out on the YouTube channel as quickly as I could so y'all could know what the second one, well, to hopefully set up for the second one. Um, so this one will only kind of introduce the second one just the littlest of bits, the hopefully the barest of teasers, with the hopes that y'all will look forward to that uh, podcast episode, which can be found on almost all podcasting platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you may find your podcasts. So please uh, go and find it whenever it drops, and if you hear about any other books that you would love for us to review, comment down below and um, hopefully we can get to it and we'd love to review it. Or if you have a book that you have written that you may think that we would enjoy, please let us know in the comments below or reach me on one of these comments or one of these links and I will try to see what we can do. But we are now going to get to The House of Salt and Sorrow by Aaron A. Craig. Now I'm going to do my very best not to give any spoilers and um, this book was released, if I remember correctly, um, so I'm going to have some of the stats up really quick because I want to do some pretty good justice for this author because I feel like it was such an amazing thing that we were given the second book as an advanced reader copy by the publishing company. So I wanted to give her a little bit of a shout out, even though I, she may not have any um, real say in who gets a copy of the advanced reader copies, but thanks to her and um, her company. But this first book, House of Salt and Sorrow, was first published August 6th, 19... Uh, 2019. Uh, it is 403 pages in the hardcover, and I think this one right at 400 pages. And if you remember from my previous episode, I may have read the back cover, so it does have a fairy tale vibe. Now, I did a little bit of research, and this story has some origins in a Grimm's fairy tale called The Twelve Dancing Princesses or The Worn Out Dancing Shoes. And I thought that was phenomenal because I love a good Grimm's fairy tales because what that tells me is that Grimm's fairy tale, um, Grimm's fairy tales are always they're dark, they're mysterious, there's usually some character development. They're, to me, a little bit better than the Disney fluff pieces that we always seem to get. Um, I love when an ending surprises me. I love when you give me a fairy tale that has these echoes to these Grimm's fairy tales that have morals and meanings that have depth and they're slightly brutal they're dark but this is just YA enough that there are a few rays of light to give me some hope um, so you have Anna Lee she is the main character in this book she is I believe daughter number six out of 12 daughters 12 sisters there are no sons in this family um, the Mother of the twelve daughters has passed, and the father has recently remarried uh, within the past few months. I would say within the past, um, I think they say four or five months since the beginning of this book. So at the beginning of this book, the book had uh, they've been married about four months. Um, but at the beginning of this book as well, as the opening scene is playing out, we are at a funeral and one of these daughters has passed and we also learn that 
three other daughters have passed as well and the mother. So there has been a lot of death in this family already. And so they have been in mourning for almost six years and the family is slowly dying off. And so one by one, it seems like the oldest or the next in line just keeps passing away. And so we've got Camille, who's now next in line, and then Annalie, who is now next. And then after that, the rest of the daughters, the rest of the sisters. Um, and they're all trying, they're, they're tired of mourning, but they miss their sisters, but they've been in mourning for these past almost six years. And um, so at this funeral or at the wake after the funeral has kind of finished, uh, we learn that this new stepmom is pregnant. And so the father then decides they're going to break their mourning and we're going to now celebrate and in this cycle, even though it's literally the day or the day after his fourth daughter has just passed. So there is a bit of a disconnect there. And even though I really like this book, there are a couple moments in it where I thought, this is, for someone who has just lost so many family members, this seems a bit disjointed. Like, I feel like we have gone a bit out of our heads just a little bit. Um, now I do feel like with so much loss, maybe you do slightly go a little bit crazy um, because maybe how do you cope with all of those sorts of feelings? And again, it is YA, there are ghosts and there are gods and demons and it seems like we've got a lot of supernatural powers going on, things of that nature. So we take some of that with a grain of salt. I, again, liked the fact that the ending left me a bit surprised. I enjoyed this book, and I was very excited that um, this book only took me about probably two days to finish. Um, the second book is going just as quickly. I think I started it literally yesterday. I will finish it tonight. I'm already at 73%. I will finish that thing tonight, and I will probably go ahead and write my review tomorrow morning. So um, it is going incredibly fast. I'm very excited to see what happens, but I will say the second book follows the youngest of the Thomas daughters. So um, the first, first book follows Anna Lee, who is about, I guess, daughter number six in line. Uh, the youngest daughter is Verity, and book two follows Verity. Now, book two still also has those same levels of supernatural. There's a still a certain level of being cursed involved. So we're still going to have a lot of those same dark fairy tale sort of elements going on. I don't want to get too involved with which Grimm's fairy tales might be involved yet because, again, this is just kind of a teaser of what you might encounter, but um, just kind of setting that up for you. I'm very excited to see what you might think about it and what you might have to say and if it might be your cup of tea. If not, that's okay. I'd love to know down below what is your cup of tea. For me, this was a five-star read because if I can read it in about two days and be pretty excited to tell you about it, then then for me, it was a win. Um, and again, the second book, I think I'll give it five stars as well. I want to know how the ending turns out because I kind of want to know what happens. But right now, I don't think I'm going to be disappointed. But until next time, I'll see you all on the next page.